Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about differentiability and continuity. Here I have this flow chart and it has the two basic rules of differentiability and continuity. So let's start off with the first one. If a function is differentiable, then it must be continuous, right? So let's assume we have just this regular linear uh, function and we're trying to find or we know the derivative of this point. If we know that this point is differentiable, then that entire, uh, or that this point must also be continuous, right? You can't take a derivative of, say, something like this, right? These two don't match up. You can't, you just, you can't do something that's oscillating like this. This pen is running out of ink. You can't find the derivative of that. It might be this, it might be that, it might be this. And you also can't find the derivative of a graph that goes like this, right? A goes to infinity. These are the three rules that break the rule of continuity because you can't draw these graphs without uh, taking your pen off of the paper, right? That's what I was taught what continuous meant. So like, this graph is continuous because I drew it all without picking up my pencil more than once at the end. I hope that made sense. It made sense in my brain. Alright, and then the second rule is if a function is continuous, then it may not be differentiable. Right? So an example of this is if we were to draw out a graph the absolute value of x, right? So if we were to say that we're trying to find the derivative of this spot, we see that the absolute value of x is continuous everywhere, right? It just keeps going up this way and this way, and you can draw the entire uh, graph without picking up your pencil, right? But we know that this point here is not differentiable. This point is what we like to call a cusp. A cusp. A cusp is where the two derivatives that come together from each side are different, right? So the two slopes are completely different. Which means that you can't find the derivative there, right? The derivative must be the same as you come in. You can't find the derivative of something that has two different derivatives coming in, right? Okay, so now we have this example problem. If f of x equals 2x plus a for x is less than or equal to 1, and b times x squared for x is greater than 1, what values of a and b will make f of x differentiable at x equals 1? Alright, so for this problem, we should figure out what our slopes, what, we should just graph something out and figure out how we're going to solve this. So the first thing I notice is that 2x plus a, that's going to be a linear function, right? And then b, at, b times x squared, that's going to be a quadratic of some sort. Now, I know that if I were to graph out some random linear function and then some random quadratic, these slopes aren't going to end up being the same, right? Because this is going to be a cusp. And we can't have a cusp because, as you know, you can't take the derivative of a cusp. So we have to find some why, or no, excuse me, some a and b in which these two slopes will be the same. The slopes, the derivatives, that's the same thing, in which the derivative will be the same. So we don't end up with this cusp, so we can take the derivative of f of 1. Okay? So, the first thing that you should do in one of these problems is you should take the derivative of both sides and set it equal to each other. So on this side we have 2x plus a, so our derivative is just going to be 2. Now this makes sense because our a, our a is just some number. Our, the derivative of a wouldn't be 1. The derivative of any number is 0. So I guess you could write it as 2 plus 0, but our derivative of this side is going to be 2. And then we take the derivative of this, so 2bx, right? And then it's asking us at x equals 1, so we can plug in 1 for x, so 2 equals 2b. 
So now, if we divide both sides by 2, we end up getting b equals 1. Alright, cool. So we've got the first part. Now, using the rule that if something is uh, differentiable, it must be continuous, we're going to plug in our newfound information into these equations. So we're going to do the same thing, only this time we're not going to take the derivative of it, but we're still going to set it equal to each other. So if our x is 1, so 2 times 1 plus a equals 1 times 1 squared, we end up getting 2 plus a equals 1, and we end up getting a equals negative 1. Okay? So now I can test this if I can find my calculator by plugging in 2 technical difficulties. Um, Alright, let's see. 2x minus 1 and we're having that from x is less than or greater. And then our second equation is just x squared from x is greater than 1. Do, do, do. Right? Okay. So now, I don't know if you can see that. Let me make sure. Let me focus a little bit. Okay. So, now you see that there isn't going to be a cusp, right, or they intersect right here at x equals 1. So, we've solved the problem.